well, but I know in the past it was pretty sketchy, but it sounds like that was what a lot of people had signed up for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I just want to welcome you all and thank you for attending tonight's appointed leadership open house and for expressing an interest in applying for an appointed leadership position for next year. Um, I'm going to run through a few starter slides and then I'll stop sharing my screen and we'll move into more of a discussion. And then once we're completed with that, I'll share some more slides that would that will detail um, the specifics of the application process, and we'll tell a little bit more about the roles that will be available for next year. So to start, I just wanted to ground us um, with the mission of the Junior League. Um, so the Junior League of Boston is an organization of women committed to promoting volunteerism, developing the potential of women, and improving communities through the effective action and leadership of trained volunteers. Its purpose is exclusively educational and charitable. So for tonight, this is a very high level agenda. Um, we're doing the opening now. We'll start with a few introductions. We'll move into an appointed leaders discussion. And then as I shared, I'll share more about the overview of the appointed leadership roles and application process. If you do have any questions, you can drop them in the chat box throughout. Otherwise, when I'm not sharing my screen, if it feels natural to you to unmute, feel free. Um, just to give an introduction, so my name is Colleen McGilvery. I am the VP of Placement for this year. Um, with us tonight, I also have Amanda Alonzo, who is the VP of Placement Elect, who will be taking over my role effective July 1st. Um, and then for our appointed leaders discussion, we have um, two folks joining us. So we have Shalini Ray, who is the current membership social events chair. And we have Elizabeth Sminsky, who is the current EVP elect, but who has held a multitude of appointed leadership roles over her tenure with the league. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, so this is the point where if you want to be on camera, feel free. Um, but Amanda is going to lead us with a discussion where both Elizabeth, myself, and Shalini will participate. So feel free to unmute, to ask questions. This can be as interactive as we would like it. So thank you. All right. So I guess that brings us to um, a number of questions that I have for you guys. And since Colleen just got to speak, I'm going to start with Elizabeth, who is not Beth, not Libby, not anything. She is Elizabeth, and that's very important. Um, so when did you join the Junior League of Boston and what placements have you participated in here? How long do we have? Um, so, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> um, I joined. Uh, I'm still an active member of the Junior League of Boston. My first year in the league was 1998, 1999, which I know for some of you would probably be a really long time. Um, I've been, uh, been in community placements, uh, one of the learning circles, a JLB arts project. Um, I was what's now called the new member advisor. I chaired the new member program. I was the show house chair. I've been a gala chair. I've been a centennial chair. Um, maybe I was also nominating chair, past president and past treasurer. Did community in there too. So there's uh, <laughs> a few others in there, but, uh, oh, and training. I did that too. Mm. There you go. Okay. So the takeaway is if we don't know something, we can ask Elizabeth because she now <laughs> knows everything, which is awesome. Oh, and I forgot one other thing. I've served on the Association of Junior Leagues International level as the secretary and vice president. Knew I was forgetting awesome. something. <laughs> Just a little piece. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Shalini, what, um, what placements have you been on? How long have you been part of the Junior League of Boston? And what appointed leadership roles have you held here? Yeah, so definitely nowhere close to Elizabeth, Lynn, <laughs> but I'm a little bit more new. I joined in 2018, so this is actually my third year. Um, so kind of getting started, but um, my first year I was in STEM, so I did the community service placement and really loved it. As a STEM person, it was really great to do that. 
And then last year, I actually switched it up and joined social committee and got to do an internal placement and um, fell in love with social so much so that this year I became social membership chair. Um, so this is my first year, you know, completing an appointed uh, leadership position. It's been, you know, not what I expected in the virtual world, but it's been a blast nonetheless. That's awesome. And Colleen, I guess in between the two of them, we've got you. What, what's your experience been here? When did you join? Yes, so I joined in 2016, um, and I too was a member of the STEM placement. Um, so I actually joined as a member of the inaugural STEM placement that took place at headquarters, and then I moved into an appointed leadership role as chair for both STEM East Boston, and then we also uh, previously had a STEM placement in Jamaica Plain that then became Dorchester. Um, so I've been kind of STEM in, in community the whole time until now working internally with placement. Awesome. So we'll go back around and Elizabeth, what drove you to take on a leadership role? Um, my first leadership role was honestly kind of unique. Someone, uh, I, we worked in a large company together. She saw me and they asked me to go to nominating. And since then, I would say that every time someone gave me an opportunity, I said yes. Um, it was uh, sometimes it's because I've gone after it. Sometimes people have asked. Sometimes it's there's been a need in the league. But mm -hmm. what I can say is every time it's I learned something brand new. And uh, loved every moment of it. Otherwise, I wouldn't still be around. <laughs> awesome. Shalini, what made you decide to take on a leadership role? Sure. So I will say Junior League um, was the first place I made my first friends in Boston. I was I was brand new to Boston and I I got a lot out of it my first year. And I'm one to give back to an organization that gives a lot to me. So I I think that's what drove me. I fell in love with the Junior League. It gave me a lot and I wanted to become a leader in it. And then of course, you know, there's always leaders above. Um, who are recommending and nominating and, you know, suggesting, you know, you should run. And so, yeah, I, I decided to, why not give it a try and, and get involved. And um, that's kind of why I did it. Awesome. And Colleen, what, what brought you to leadership? <laughs> Mine was similar. Being in a yeah. new placement my first year, I saw so much potential and I really, I had the bandwidth and I, I really loved, you know, coming in every week and working with the little girls. Um, and so I decided to kind of, you know, step up and it's really helped me to feel more connected to the league. Um, but similarly, you know, I was approached by other leaders and was encouraged to apply. And so I think having that feedback loop is important. Um, so I encourage you, you know, as you progress in your leadership trajectory to always be kind of thinking about others and encouraging and identifying them to also apply for leadership roles. Awesome. So back to you, Elizabeth, do you oh, have any- Someone else gets to go first. You can oh. switch this up a little. Okay, then you know what, Julie, <laughs> then you're in the hot seat because there's only three of you, so we can only popcorn <laughs> in so many directions. Um, so Elizabeth tagged you, so it's her fault, not mine. Um, <laughs> Do you have any advice for members who are considering applying for an appointed leadership position? Is there anything that you would tell them, you know, helpful advice of any kind? Yeah, so I think the biggest piece of advice I've taken away from this past year is um, you kind of just have to roll with it. You know, there's going to be things thrown at you in a leadership position and don't be scared to make mistakes. I think Junior League is a very safe place and you have a lot of resources. And there are times when you're gonna not have any idea what you're doing or what you're supposed to do. And you just reach out to, you know, Shan or Katie or the president or your, you know, your your VP or anybody. And they are always there to help you and just roll with it, you know? Don't be scared to um, make a mistake um, because that's how you're gonna learn. and and. You don't have to be perfect. This is an extracurricular. This is meant to be fun and enjoyable. So um, don't take it so seriously. Yeah. All right, Colleen, we'll, we'll give her a break there. Um, do you have any advice for people? You know, it's funny. I had put some notes down and it's almost like you read my, my little script that I had. Um, <laughs> but my biggest takeaway is to be flexible. Um, you know, we are a volunteer-led organization and 
you know, that's a really great opportunity, but we have to meet people where they are. Um, so I would encourage you to apply for a role. Um, even if you don't feel that you have the full expertise that would maybe be required for it. Um, you know, the mission, and I, I'll talk about this a little bit in the presentation later, um, but it really is the mission of the Junior League to provide training opportunities and to provide leadership roles. And so, you know, there is that support there and we do want to see you succeed. Um, so if you have the bandwidth and the motivation, I highly encourage you to put forward an application. Awesome. All right, Elizabeth, we're back. Yeah. So the, the, the two things, well, I guess I got a couple is, um, and, and they did steal some of my answers, so maybe it's better going first. But first of all, go ahead and apply. Don't worry if you think I don't have this or that, or maybe I, I need the perfect thing. So that's it. And also apply for multiple things because um, try something that maybe is different for you. Try something that's the same, but also remember that we are have a number of members. So if you don't get your first choice, it isn't a reflection of you. So don't think, oh my goodness, they didn't think this or that. Um, it's, it's more sometimes trying to piece the puzzles together. Colleen and Amanda have quite a big task of trying to figure out who all the leaders are going to be. And I've learned over the years to think about that, to say, you know, let me try something. But, you know, they may have had someone else who's also trying. And then I'm going to put, this might be a little bit the next question, but also look back at our mission statement. And I always say this, it's the effective action of trained volunteers. It doesn't say the efficient action of trained volunteers. And when I'm training people, it's exactly, it, you're going to try different things. You're going to try things out of the box. Do ask people for information because as much as as many years as I've been in the league, I am still learning things and things in the league change every year. And sometimes it's because we bring new people in and also to just try to ask people, you know, well, what happened before? What do you think? Or what about this idea? You know, it, it can't hurt to ask um, and always try to, to speak up. And when you are, it's, it's always hard. And after being in the league all these years, sometimes it's hard for me to say, I really don't understand these things or how does this work? But do, because pretty sure that someone else may not know the same thing. So either someone you're going to find someone who has the answer, but also you'll be good about asking the question or someone else needs that, especially as we've been through this whole transition. So, but go for it and apply that, you know, that's the easy part, filling it out. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Do, so, do we have a, sorry, Amanda, do we have a hand raised? Does somebody have a question? Um, um, I had a question up. This is Anne Michelle. Um, I was just asking about the time commitment. I know that there's like a, there are different positions that each of you held, but I would love to hear about the time commitment that you all have spent um, in these positions just to get like an overview of what it could look like. Sure. Um, I think we can each share our individual experience. And then I can also say that, um, and I'll talk about this again in the presentation later, but we will be sharing um, an appointed leadership catalog, which has many, many details and a robust description of every position. And within that, it does give a range for about what the yearly commitment of time is. Um, but I think it's a great question in terms of what it really looks like week to week. Um, so I can say for me as a as STEM chair, um, so obviously one of us, so there were three. Um, and so one of us was tasked with being there each Saturday during the sessions. The sessions ran for about six hours. And so, you know, if it was your week, you couldn't anticipate being there. Um, and then throughout the week, I'd say if you were going to attend that session, you could plan to put maybe two hours of a commitment in. Um, otherwise, I'd set it you know, it kind of evened out to about an hour or so a week um, if you weren't attending that session. So that was my experience with three chairs. Um, but Elizabeth or Shalini, if you have different experiences, I'd love to hear it. I'll let you go first, Shalini. Okay. So yeah, so with social this year, it was definitely a little bit different with everything being virtual. So I can speak a little bit to how it was this year compared to last year as well. So 
Um, as, a, as a social chair, you are part of membership. So we did have monthly membership meetings. And then I also held monthly meetings, um, one hour to one to two hours a month with my social committee. And then on top of that, it was just, I like to say like, you get out of it, what you put into it, right? So this year, our social committee, we put on five to six virtual events a month. I mean, the calendar was pretty, pretty packed. So between my committee and I, we did do a lot of planning um, off the meeting time. So sometimes it's just spending a couple hours a week, maybe following up with people we're working with um, or following up with someone in my committee to help them get uh, an event planned. In pre-pandemic times and um, to last year, I and mean, if you remember, maybe there was more of like one to two social events a month, which is a little bit more reasonable as we were traveling to actually go somewhere to a place and it's a little bit harder to put on events. So it's, it's really, how much we wanted to put into it. Um, and you know, some people on my committee put on a lot of events and I helped support them through that. And, and I would agree with what both of them uh, said. I would say when I was a new member advisor, um, my, I had a co-advisor and we organized between the two of us what our responsibilities were and we were each other's backup, but we were able, one of the things that we did was great was kind of plan the meetings with our groups around our schedules. And so we laid out things ahead of time and then allowed people flexibility. And, um, you know, when I chaired the whole, you know, was working with my group, there would be questions, but I'd say only once a month I'd have a meeting, then I would have my monthly meeting with all the advisors. And then I'd say it was probably an hour besides, you know, we'd have one group meeting and then asking questions, but that was more being able to fit in emails. When I did do the, the gala, that was probably more time, but in the beginning, you, you know, you organize it and you put the pieces out and then it's a matter of how well you wanna um, work things out. But I also made sure that we kind of assigned people and, and tried to make it clear for people what they wanted, but also to know that you were there to back them up. So I think similar to Shalini that, you know, I, I knew that I would be there to support the events, but also, um, you know, for me, that's one of the things I've always loved about Junior League is kind of knowing what's there. You kind of plan out and then you plan for the things you can't plan for. So you kind of know that, you know, tonight I'll be doing this and, you know, I might catch up on emails. Um, you know, that's that's the big thing for me is you get a lot of emails and communications a lot and just trying to find the time for all of that with other things you do. Um, but the personal encounters and the zoom usually makes it so easy to work things out so yeah awesome um all right colleen we're gonna pick on you um do you have a favorite experience or memory from your time as an appointed leader um i i do so i was obviously working with stem um and so we would take them on field trips we take the middle school girls on field trips and so as chair, you're really, you know, you're making sure that we're all set, that we have the correct permissions, that we have the buses organized. Um, so for me, it was bonding with my co-chair over the buses um, that we had. It, it, it was funnier if you were there, um, but we were just trying to coordinate. We had like 25 middle school girls who were very excited to get to the aquarium and we had a school bus coming and it was just kind of a crazy situation. Like Elizabeth said, we couldn't plan for, you know, we, we knew where the bus was coming and when they were coming, um, but just being kind of in the moment and being able to feel like I was really just tag teaming with my co-chair um, and we did it and everything worked perfectly and the girls had an amazing time. Um, but that was probably, you know, looking back in the moment, I was like, whoa, this is, um, a major responsibility. We have a lot of girls that we're responsible for here. Um, but looking back, I'm really proud of how we, we kept calm and we pulled it off and it really, it really was a great day looking back. Awesome. Shalini, do you have a favorite memory? So as an appointed leader, Unfortunately, I didn't get to have, you know, one-on-one -on -one interaction and person interaction this year, but I will say one of my favorite parts um, about being the social chair this year was I got so many recommendations of local businesses and not even local, I guess, regional businesses to work with 
um, from members. And actually this one member recommended this um, other nonprofit called Thistle Farms. Um, if any of you guys attended that event, um, it was a speaker on human trafficking, but she did like a, uh, a sip and shop where she talked about her experience and then allowed members to shop. And honestly, I had no idea what to expect, but this member kind of was like, you know, can you, can you plan an event, you know, with this organization? I was like, sure, why not? Let's see how it goes, you know, going in with zero expectations. And it ended up being one of the most, uh, I guess, emotional, but also really awesome event. And I, and I love that it came from a fellow member. And I love that I've gotten to get recommendations for a lot of our events through that. Awesome. That's terrific. All right, Elizabeth. Dig deep. You know, I, I, <laughs> this really, I could go on for hours. So I'm going to go in a different way as my experience is that I think being a new member advisor has been, uh, was one of the best things that I have uh, done. It's probably, I, I, I try not to pick favorite experiences and, uh, Besides being fortunate enough to be president, that probably is, but that's not an appointed. Um, but the women that I got to meet and the experiences with them and really teaching them about the Junior League and a, a, a small fact that I'm immensely proud of is that six women that I was a provisional new member advisor to went on to become president, five of the Junior League of Boston, one in another Junior League. And one of them I'm beyond excited to be, and that is Kathleen Quinlan Riley. So she was in my, uh, not even my first provisional class, but that just to me is to, and have that incredible friendship with the people, I have to say is that I've met amazing women and there's just something about you meet a junior leaguer and it's just a commonality and just uh, a wonderful thing. It doesn't mean you'll always agree with everything, but you get to learn so many different experiences. And I still remember, you know, going to a meeting at Kathleen's, she was hosting the meeting because that's what we did. We'd have, you know, people plan what they were doing. And we did game night at our house and meeting her twins who are now sophomores in college, which to me is like, uh -oh. wow, they've gotten older. Kathleen does not age by the way. So, <laughs> but that's just such a great, to be able to meet these great women and to continue to work with them all the years. Is I'd have to pick out as my favorite experience. Awesome. So um, Shalini, given that this is new to you and you're probably in a good position to think you know, about this year, do you feel that you have any tips or tricks this year that you think were really helpful to make you successful? Yeah, I made a lot of lists and I put a lot, made a lot of reminders. Um, and to Elizabeth's point of, just being on top of emails. I think that was really big. I mean, in a world where we're, we don't have face-to-face -face communication or meetings, it was just very important. Even if it was in between meetings, I'd always do a quick check of my email on the junior league and say, you know, making sure things were keeping up. And I was checking items off the list to get things up in time. So I think just being really organized, um, especially in a virtual sense, but also just in non-pandemic itself, there's a lot of emails between leadership happening. And there's sometimes often quite a few steps to get events or um, communications out to make sure you just stay on top of it. Awesome, Colleen? Um, I agree on the email front. I, if, mm -hmm. if there's an email, um, if there's a JL Boston email associated with your role, I encourage you to like put it on your phone. That's helpful for me, um, especially when we're in person and I can just check emails, you know, if I'm in route there. Um, that's a very helpful tip. Um, and otherwise, I would just say be proactive. Um, you know, I don't ever assume that people know what's going on or know when things are needed. Um, so just check in with them. I don't think anyone ever minds an email um, because it helps to keep us all on track. So just being proactive and, um, you know, if you are, if you do have a deadline, you know, just be honest. If you, if you can't meet it, set that expectation. Um, and it's fine. We're all volunteers. We get it. Um, but just being upfront and just being cl clear with expectations, I think is, is huge. Awesome. Elizabeth, do you have any tips? A um, couple of them going on that. I would also say um, with email, don't read tone into email. And that's the hardest thing. And I, I'm very good about giving that advice. And sometimes, you know, 
I, you know, and I try to say that to my groups ahead of time. You know, if someone asks me a question, it's going to be yes, not yes, uh, you know, long time, you know, try to understand that people just say um, clear, um, you know, concise. Also managing the expectations of your group um, and also trying to figure out what they can and can't um, like, you know, if like when I was the gala chair, making sure the group knew, okay, we can have input into this, but there are certain things that the board or the president decides so we can have a whole long discussion on it, but let's like all come to consensus of what we, what we really can decide. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a date was set, but we could pick the colors, you know, we can come up with a suggestion of a theme, but it still has to be approved, you know, things that people understand. Um, also, if you can have people have an idea to pick things that they'd like to do or even want to try. So, you know, um, you know, get to know people and allow people to have a little bit of time to get to know one another. Um, so that when you're working on that project that they they feel like, oh, you know, and another tip I have, and especially when we're virtual, or even when you start meeting, is having a way to people use their names because nothing's more awkward and you're in the third meeting and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't remember her name. And, you know, I, I can remember everything or, or someone wasn't at the first meeting and then remembering that, you know, you, you think you know people, but it's hard. So that that's a big tip that sometimes making everyone feel welcome. And if they weren't there, trying to figure out a way to engage them. One thing I just wanted to add off of what Elizabeth said is it's important to remember that this isn't work. You know, as someone who works in corporate America, I try to completely change my mindset when I come to junior league. And, and this is a volunteer role. Like people are doing this for fun. Everyone's not going to put a hundred percent into it. Some people, you know, have other life commitments. So you know, in a leadership position, you are managing a committee. And so some people are going to be more responsive and active than others. So just making sure you meet people where they are and understand, you know, what their other obligations are. Yeah. And, and that's one other, you remind me another tidbit that I take from our mission. So our, our mission statement says we're exclusively educational and charitable. And yes, that means we support it. We're a charitable organization, but it's also a reminder to be charitable to one another. Because how many times do we go and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe they put the green napkins. I would have done pink. And the other thing is, and I hate to say, but sometimes as a group, you come away and you were like, great. And then someone says, oh, but this was a little tough. And then what do we all do? We start coming up with nitpicking all of those things. And we got to remember and be like, you know what? It was awesome. And wow, that was a creative idea. And I'm going to put a little plug into the junior league and in your appointed leadership and everything else. Remember to tell everyone outside the league what a great time you had and how much you enjoy it. Because so many times, so many friends come home and they'll be like, their, their partners, their friends will be like, oh, the junior league, you had to go to another meeting. I don't, you know, instead it's like, oh my goodness, I went to this junior league meeting and I got to meet these new people and we decided this and this happened. And that's, you know, remember why we did it. So share that because it makes other people want to be excited about it. Awesome. That's, a, that's actually a really great tip. And I, I co-sign on the not ascribing bad intent to people where there's no evidence. I think <laughs> that is one of the most life-changing pieces of advice that I have ever like put into use in my own life. Unless you have a reason to know that it's bad, assume it's good. And it just makes you happier. It makes everybody's life easier, you know? All right, so we have a last question. And um, this one's for Colleen and Elizabeth. And so for both of you who've gone on to slated leadership roles after having an appointed leadership role, how did your appointed leadership experience help prepare you for a slated leadership position? So Colleen, you can go. <laughs> um, I think for me, it just helped me to build confidence within the league, um, you know, holding an appointed leadership position, I really felt more connected to the league, um, you know, whether it's just because I was doing more with it, or you just kind of get looped into things and you learn more and you grow and you just become more confident in your, your own membership. And so for me, you know, I think I probably could have applied for a slated leadership role even before when I did. But I think I just needed to build the confidence. And so, 
you know, the appointed leadership helped me to do that. Um, that's probably the biggest takeaway for me. Awesome. And, and for me, I think it was that it's always given me the most connections with the members to, um, as an appointed leadership, you're more, I think a little bit, the word I would say is hands-on. And even as I'm going into my next role, which will be new to me, it's, it's getting to talk and hear what members are really interested in and hearing what the concerns are rather than looking at it, um, you know, at a leadership level, we're trying to think of a lot of things and the appointed, um, you got to hear more about people, what their interests were, it, um, get to hear why different people join the junior league. We all have different reasons for joining the junior league. Um, and just a chance to, I, I love that piece about confidence because it allows you to um, really understand you can't break the junior league. It hasn't broken yet. We're the second oldest. I don't think we're going to break it. And um, also the opportunity to really try new things. The appointed leadership is, I think, really um, doing something. I liked how you said, Shalini, doing something different. Like you go and someone puts on the event. For me, when I did the gala, I had never done something like that before. Um, but wow, it was so much fun. And now I do this for, I left the corporate world and went into the nonprofit world and you know do these events now. But when I did it for the junior league, it was like, oh my goodness, what is this? Um, but great opportunity. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for answering all, all the questions and everything. And I think Colleen, we now have time uh, to open it up to more questions from our group, if people have any. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions for um, our panelists, including myself right now, um, we certainly have time. Um, if not, or if you have questions that are more just general application based, um, there will also be a few minutes at the end. And then as always, if there's a question that you don't want to ask in this forum, you can email me directly at the placement at jlbboston.org. But if there aren't any questions, um, I will move on to the next part of the agenda. So I will share my screen, but I thank you, Elizabeth Angelini, so much for participating and Amanda for helping yeah. um, ask the question. Um, so like I said, if anyone has questions, you can oh. drop them in the chat. Um, otherwise, we'll have some time at the end. I think Anne, Anne Michelle, oh, yep. did she have a question? Sorry, I didn't have a question. I was just saying good oh. job. I was using the applause. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> thank you all so much. Well, thank you. I joined on my iPad and it's so small and I don't have my glasses on. I just saw a yellow hand, so I'm sorry. No, I'm glad that we spotted it. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen and we'll go through some slides and then um, we will adjourn. Okay, um, so I just wanted to take a moment to share this slide because I love it so much. Um, it might look familiar to you if you were able to join the fall GMM. Um, but this is just kind of a snippet of snapshots of the faces of jail Boston leadership. And so I hope it kind of just underscores to you that there's quite a, a, a large number of leaders across the league. And I hope that in some ways you can see yourself in these women and that it inspires you to apply for an appointed leadership role. Um, I did also just want to highlight the email address at the bottom of this slide. Um, so this email address goes to both Slated leadership position and then also for appointed leadership positions. So if you have any questions about leadership in general and you want to ask them in confidence, this is a great email address to reach out to. Um, but otherwise, you can reach me directly at placement and you can reach Amanda at the placement elect inbox. So just a little bit of a high level overview of the appointed leadership process overall. So it's coordinated by the placement council and the leadership positions really vary and include roles such as new member and transfer advisors. There are internal placements such as signature events chair. And then of course our community partnership where STEM is an example. 
Um, as we mentioned previously, members can apply for a specific position and applications are reviewed and interviews are conducted by various members of the executive management team. Um, just to provide some background into how we formalize our planning process. So in March and then April and May, the appointed leadership positions are confirmed for the next year. Um, this happens in tandem with our planning for next year, including our general placement planning. Um, in late May, the appointed leadership catalog becomes available and the applications launch. The applications are then reviewed and interviews conducted on a rolling basis. And we are hopeful that we will be announcing the appointed leaders in mid-June. So just some facts. Um, so for appointed leadership positions for 2021-2022, um, we're hoping to hit a minimum of about 77 members in appointed leadership roles. Um, so that really just underscores kind of the breadth and depth of the opportunity that's available. And if you do put forward an application, you'll be in very good company with a very strong group of leaders across the league. Um, one thing to note is that you will often see the roles described as either a chair or a lead position. So just the distinction there is a chair has committee members that report into them. And so they help to coordinate the committee as well as leading projects. So examples of a chair position would be Learning Circles Blue Hills or Sponsorship and Grants Chair. Um, in contrast, a lead does not have a committee that reports into them, but they do take on specialized ownership over a certain project or task. So that could be something like a grants lead or an advocacy lead. And oftentimes leads will also sit within a committee that has chairs, um, but they kind of deep dive and have special ownership over a project. And then we did um, underscore this in the panel session, but training and support is provided. So truthfully, if you do not have the full expertise or full skills needed to hold a position, but you have motivation and excitement, we can find a spot for you and we will work with you to make sure that you feel fully supported while holding that position. So next I'm gonna run through a high level overview of the available positions for next year. Um, this is truthfully just a listing of what will be available. As I said, we will be launching the application soon and the catalog will also be available very soon. And within that, there is very robust and detailed descriptions of each position. But as always, if you ever have questions, you can reach out to me and I can often put you in contact with someone who's held the role previously and they can speak to their experience as well. So for the board of directors appointed leadership roles, there will be five for next year, including strategic research and analysis chair as well as strategic research and analysis committee member, which will be considered an appointed position. You will also have an advocacy lead, advocacy chair, and major donor committee chair. For the executive management team, we will have a diversity, equity, inclusion chair, as well as communications and technology chair. For community, so you'll notice these are all chairs, so they're leading committees that work with our community partners. Um, so we will have JLB Art, Community Impact, Jeremiah Program, Learning Circles Blue Hills, East Boston STEM, Kids in the Kitchen, and then our Camp College Advising. And next year will actually be the first year with college advising as a full placement. Um, so that will be exciting for the, these chairs uh, to really be kicking off a new project. For membership, we will have membership recruitment and outreach chair, active program chair, active program advisor. We'll have membership social events chair, new member advisors, transfer program chair, transfer program advisor, sustainer program committee chair, and sustainer program advisor. And one thing to note, I did not list uh, how many of each position we will have, but for instance, new member advisors, we will have many more than one. Uh, so as I've referenced, some of these are either a co-chair opportunity where there are two or three people who are leading a committee, um, or in the case of many of the advisors, there will be more than one that will lead smaller groups within those membership brackets. 
And for fund development, we will have sponsorship and grants chair, grants lead, sponsorship lead, major events chair, major events communications lead, major events sponsorship lead, signature events chair, signature events communications lead, charity gala chair, charity gala communications lead, and then products chair. So there's a lot of opportunity to get involved. And I think this is a great example of how you can really specialize within a certain subset if that's of interest to you. And then lastly, for training, we will have a board seat initiative lead, mentorship program lead, and advocacy lead. So next I'm going to detail a few things that you can expect uh, for the application process. Um, so the application process, um, we will have the appointed leadership catalog will be available very soon, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, we just have a few minor edits to make before we launch that. Um, after the catalog is available, you'll be able to submit online uh, the application for, for specific positions. Um, as mentioned previously, you will have the option to rank up to four positions that you would be interested in holding. Um, you will only hold one appointed leadership role, but as Elizabeth spoke to previously, um, you know, sometimes there are many applicants for one specific role, and we might be able to connect your talents to a different position that will also be a great experience. Um, after you submit your application, you'll be invited for an interview with an EMT elect member or potentially a board member based on the role. And then once the interviews are completed and the applications are reviewed, we will announce the appointed leaders for next year. Um, Sandra, did you have a question? I see a hand. Yeah, you had one slide that just said community. There were, and what was, I apologize, but what were those two positions in community? It was just before the appoint, community appointed leadership. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, was it this slide? Next one. This one? Or this one? This one. Join this one. This one. <laughs> this one you get to work okay. with Amanda and I next year. Oh, okay, thank you. I, I kind of like you. <laughs> you seem you seem bubbly and fun and you have a lot of information and experience i remember that okay but all of them are great but just you know and the dei committee is a really great committee too so um so the timeline for the appointed leadership process so as i said we're crossing the finish line with a few minor edits um, but it's our hope, I'm saying May 21st as a working goal. Um, this timeline is certainly subject to change, but we will move everything together. So you will have ample time to apply and submit your application once they do open. But our working timeline and our target is to open at the end of this week and allow for applications for about a week or so. Um, we will close the appointed leadership application at some point, either at the very end of May or early June. We will then have applications reviewed and interviews conducted. And then, as I said earlier, mid-June is our target to announce the appointed leaders for next year. Um, and then one other thing to note is over the summer, there will be a specific training um, for appointed leadership to attend. Um, this is a great kickoff and really just kind of gives you tools and just kind of an overview of where you can find certain information. Um, and more information will be provided when the application launches. So that does conclude our presentation for tonight. But again, we want to thank you all for coming and for your interest in an appointed leadership position. Um, this here is the email. You, it will reach me directly. Um, I monitor it all the time. Um, if you did want to reach Amanda, uh, she is placement elect at jailboston.org. So I'm going to stop sharing and we do have a few minutes if anyone has any questions. Um, but like I said, I'm always available on email. I'm happy to connect you to an appointed leader who's been in the role previously. 
Um, but overall, I mean, if, if you put the time to come here tonight, I, I am confident that you would be successful as an appointed leader. And we really hope that you will put forward an application over the coming weeks. So if anyone has any questions, you can raise your hand, drop it in the chat. If not, I can give people 10 minutes back, which sounds like a very work thing to say, but um, <laughs> I know that it is a Tuesday night and people have lots of things going on. Colleen, Amanda, so, I actually, oh, okay, I actually have a ahead. quick question for you guys. And this is kind of more applicable to all the new members this year. So I've gotten a lot of questions from my committee. Um, is if they're a new member, can they still, are there any restrictions on applying to appointed leadership in their first active year? To no, leadership. so if they were, so if next year is their first active year, Correct. then they're okay to apply as long as that they mm -hmm. are in good standing with the league overall. Awesome. And this applies to, this is the next year, September. Right, Correct. so we will, we think of the league year as officially starting on July 1st, but yes, most of these don't really kick off until September. And then everybody always sounds so knowledgeable and, and it's very intimidating. Aww. So you really kind of, you really, you really kind of really do train. You don't have a ton of responsibility that first year or correct, help me out. So it, it's kind of a fine line and Elizabeth, Shalini or Amanda, feel free to jump in. Um, you know, obviously if you're stepping up to take on a responsibility, you, you know, we will look to you to kind of drive that process. That being said, um, there's ample resource and many members you know, that can help you if, if there are gaps in um, either your current knowledge base or if you have questions. Um, you will always be reporting into someone who's either on the executive management team or on the board. So you can always look to them as kind of your first um, touch point if you do have questions and they are, um, you know, they will definitely be driving the ship and they will really help you to get where you need to be. Yeah, I just add that, like, you know, as part of our mission, part of it is, is that we are a training organization and part of what we do is help to train you, to help you develop skills and be successful and everybody's got the same mission. And so you won't be set up to fail. I have never reached out to somebody and had somebody refuse to help me. Or if they didn't have the answer, they would give me another contact. Um, oh, so you, you didn't fire yeah. anybody. That's Nobody gets say. fired. No, <laughs> no it's, I, it is a very- I'm, I'm teasing. It's a good place. No, I mean, it's a very soft place to land. And if you're looking at expanding your horizons and trying something new, I think it's, the perfect environment in which to do that because nobody's going to fire you. You you cannot break it. You can't mess it up. Nobody's going to die. It's all going to be okay. You know, we're all going to, everybody wants everyone to be successful. And I think that is an awesome thing. Yeah. It'll probably Sandra's, be even better than you imagine. Right. Yeah. To their point, I mean, I came in as a social chair with no event planning experience and I had resources and help from people and you know now I could call myself an event planner but I wouldn't call myself an event planner <laughs> back when I started so um, you definitely figure it out along the way with support well and I would say my favorite event was the uh the dating events the speed dating and yeah speed dating <laughs> I love those awesome thank you of course does anyone else have any questions comments, concerns, anything? No? Okay. Well, I will let you all go, but I thank you all for attending. And I really, truly hope, 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 hope that we will see an appointed leadership application from you. Um, and please reach out. No question is a bad question. And thank you, Shalini and Elizabeth, too. Appreciate yes, it so much. so much. Thank you. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> thanks thank for you having all. us. <laughs> thanks, all. Thanks. All right. Bye. 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 Have a good night, everybody.